Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for Daily Devotions through Redeeming Life Fellowship. Uh, it's good to see you all today. Uh, hello, Luke, David, Bryce, Faith, uh, Glenn, the whole gang. I love you guys. It's so good to see you today. Uh, but today, yes, we're going to continue through our uh, Revive School reading plan. It's going to be leading us, continuing through the prophet Jeremiah. And we're going to be focusing on chapters 34, 35, 36. Rather, that's the reading plan that's been leading us through those chapters today for Monday. Uh, but today, I actually just really want to focus, hone in on chapter 35, chapter 35 of Jeremiah. And uh, if you haven't, um, feel free to go ahead and pause the video uh, and read through, whether it's chapter 35 or through chapters 34, 35, 36, and then we'll uh, return back and uh, and make a, a few observations and then draw out to a lesson for today. So go ahead. So today, uh, some of the things you might notice uh, is that uh, in this chapter, uh, it is it demonstrates so well, basically, not just the mess that these, the people of Judah and Jerusalem are in, but also the sort of mess that they are in, in large part due to faulty leadership. So, uh, in 34, you see Zedekiah trying to win God's favor by releasing slaves, and then the people not following through on it reverting back, and then God saying, yes, I'll release you now, and release you to plague and pestilence and death, and uh, that didn't turn out very well. Uh, but then what's interesting is that the um, chapters 35 and 36, uh, it's not as easy to notice immediately if you're not paying attention to the names of the kings, is that uh, 35 and 36 are actually flashbacks to a previous time that appear to be sort of um, uh, smuggled in or, or slipped into the narrative that gets you thinking about um, a, a present condition in relation to past events. Uh, so in this case, in chapter 35, uh, it's referring uh, not to... Uh, Zedekiah, the last uh, king before uh, the Babylonians finally totally, completely uh, overwhelm and overthrow uh, Jerusalem, but to that of the reign of Jehoiakim. So this is uh, uh, a little ways back. And uh, what happens is that Jer the Lord speaks to Jeremiah and says uh, to go and find these Rechabites. And the Rechabites, I think, are actually pretty interesting people, uh, not least because they are a people who, according to their custom and their custom of living in relationship to a faithful promise that they as a people are intended to keep, that they live as nomads. Uh, I hope maybe you do or don't know what a nomad is. A nomad is a person who doesn't actually um, live anywhere, uh, doesn't have a permanent home or residence within a town or a city or a, uh, a state, but they, they travel around, uh, they wander about. In this respect, sometimes you maybe might refer or uh, uh, consider them gypsies, not gypsies in the pagan sense, but rather gypsies in the way that they just live um, in tents and make their living off of the open land. And so I don't know if you'd want to live as uh, a Rechabite. Uh, I don't know if I would be a very good Rechabite because I like my coffee too much. But God speaks to Jeremiah and says, go bring these Rechabites into the temple. And uh, as a further note, the Rechabites are for this time being, a temporary period, seeking refuge in the city of Jerusalem because Babylon has taken over the surrounding region and that their lives uh, are uh, put in danger uh, to uh, against this threat of Babylon. So they're seeking refuge in the city of Jerusalem. And God says to Jeremiah, bring them into the temple and offer them some wine to drink, uh, which, you know, 
uh, I don't think this isn't, uh, you know, God's attempt at wanting to try and get them to be tipsy, but, but, um, but just offer them some wine. And here's the way, once, um, Jeremiah offers them this wine, uh, uh, here's how they respond. It says, but they replied, we do not drink wine because our forefather, Jonadab, son of Rechab, uh, gave us this command, which pause, um, the genealogical relations as they're listed, uh, a forefather, Jonadab, son of Rechab, leads them back into a very distant relationship to a man named Jethro. And Jethro, as we know from Exodus, uh, was the father-in-law of Moses. So um, we're talking about a very long stretch of time uh, that that these um, genealogical traces are to to um, to the people of Israel, which I mean, in this case, are not I would say like full Hebrews, but they're very very closely related. Uh, and so let's uh, let's continue. It says, "We do not drink wine because our forefather Jonadab, son of Rechab, gave us this command." Neither you nor your descendants must ever drink wine. Also, you must never build houses, sow seed, or plant vineyards. You must never have any of these things, but must always live in tents. Then you will live a long time in the land where you are nomads. We have obeyed everything our forefather Jonadab, son of Rechab, commanded us. Neither we, nor our wives, nor our sons and daughters have ever drunk wine or built houses to live in or had vineyards, fields, or crops. We have lived in tents and have fully obeyed everything our forefather John and Deb commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded this land, we said, Come, we must go to Jerusalem to escape the Babylonian and the Aramean armies. So we have remained in Jerusalem. And so, the for the Rechabites, what you have is a people who they orient their lives in response to a, a, a covenant, a way of living, um, in response to what their forefathers have passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. It would be in a way that, um, that for the Rechabites, if they're seeking shelter in Jerusalem, that they might uh, be tempted to disregard the voice of their ancestors in large part because uh, of fear for, uh, uh, for their lives against the threat of Babylon. And that by coming into Jerusalem, you would think that if for this time period that they've had to not live as nomads, that they might actually... Uh, compromise other parts of their faith and live in accordance with, as it would be, a lower standard of living, a lower moral standard, a lower covenantal standard uh, against uh, all of those who they're rubbing shoulders with and being terrified of Babylon in Jerusalem. But they don't. Uh, they're not the sort of people who are neglecting uh the what was commanded to them against the pressures and the norms of what the people the people who are around them and this becomes something of a problem an indictment against the 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 people of Jerusalem and their leaders in large part because let's let's use this as an example you know how if you're in a class and you're given an assignment or a test question, and everybody fails at it. You realize that uh, it almost is something of a relief because you know that if everybody fails at it, the problem really does um, fall back on the teacher by giving everybody too hard an assignment so that um, nobody can really be held responsible for failing at this assignment. But then uh, suppose you're given an assignment and... Um, and you fail at it, but then there's uh, another person or a group of people within that same class 
who don't only not fail, but they actually excel. Uh, they thrive. Uh, they've figured out the enigma. They've um, uh, taken this task that was received to them and they hit it out of the park. They just, um, they did it so well. And you know that when that happens, it doesn't just simply bespeak of their ability uh, to do something, but also your inability and your failures look so much larger in comparison to somebody else's successes. To say, uh, these per this person, this group of people succeeded in this way. Now, why haven't you? Uh, what's happened? Uh, and here's what happens. Well, it says, then the word of the Lord cared, came to Jeremiah saying, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Go and tell the men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, will you not learn a lesson and obey my words, declares the Lord? Jonadab, son of Rechab, ordered his sons not to drink wine, and this command has been kept. To this day, they do not drink wine because they obey their forefathers' command. But I have spoken to you again and again, yet you have not obeyed me. Again and again, I sent all my servants, to the prophets, to you. They said, each of you must turn from your wicked ways and reform your actions and do not follow other gods to serve them. Then you will live in the land I have given you and your forefathers, you and your fathers, but you have not paid attention or listened to me. The descendants of Jonadab, son of Rechab, have carried out the commands that their forefathers gave them, but these people have not obeyed me. Now, the takeaway, I think, for all of us that we have to hold fast to or to, to remember as we're learning a lesson from the Rechabites is that it is easy, certainly, to compromise on the basis of a faulty excuse that says we were unfaithful to God because we were either uh, following our own way or just going with the flow of the customs of the day. What you see with the Rechabites is that even while there are temptations for this people to do, to do this thing and live this kind of people, and for these people to do this over there, that what was foremost in their minds was their fidelity, their faithfulness to what was commanded to them, that well, they will be a different people. In the same way that um, the people of Jerusalem could look at the Rechabites and say, we don't have any excuse. We didn't listen, and because we didn't listen, we invited this judgment on ourselves is that um, we are a people who God calls to listen to his word and to respond with faithful and humble obedience. And excuses to say that we were just following what everybody else was doing will not save us. And it's also important to note that in this case, that when God places a calling on a person's life, uh, Oftentimes, that means that it's going to be breaking with uh, conventional customs, raising you up to a higher moral standard against everybody else around you, and that on those grounds, God calls you to be different and asks you and asks me and asks us to rise up to the occasion, not to become complacent and fall back. So be encouraged. Uh, take heed to the word of the Lord. Uh, be a person who, um, who lives with open ears, open eyes, open hearts to the word of the Lord and holds fast to that above all else. So uh, thank you so much for taking time to uh, join us for daily devotions. If you haven't, do please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get daily notifications for our uh, daily devotions. I can't forgot what we were doing here. And um, in all things, I'm um, so glad that you were, we're just uh, we've had this time together, and I hope to see you if it be uh, here on the YouTube channel next Thursday or on Wednesdays and Sundays when we gather here together. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be uh, very soon in a, a new location. Uh, we'll keep you posted on how that goes, and uh, let's continue to uh, to 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 uh, grow mature disciples uh, at uh, here at Redeeming Life Fellowship. So God bless you all. Take care.